Hello and welcome to Chicken Bros. My name is David Heath. And I'm Roger Ock William. <laughs> yes, and welcome to episode four of the new series of Doctor Who. Uh seventy three yards. Ouch. This if I one. were to use anything as a visual representation of a mind fuck, this would probably be it. Yeah. This one really messes with the brain. Yes, in a lot of ways. And I don't I still don't to this day fully understand it, but I'll try Me to, neither. We'll try as hard as we can to explain what happened. So it starts with Ruby and the Doctor landing in Wales in modern day. For whatever reason. Like if it was like ancient well ancient Wales or futuristic Wales, I could understand. But modern day Wales? I'm, What's sure, modern they, day? I'm sure they had reasons, but we never really got to see it. But anyway That's true. When they land, uh, Ruby's talking about the two other times she had been to Wales, um, and then, without realizing, the Doctor steps on something and breaks this little rope. Which, as soon as I saw that, because, at, uh, for everyone who doesn't know, so, Americans, uh, Wales has a very strong Celtic uh, culture, kind of like um, Ireland and Scotland do, because the Celtic people are the descendants of the Welsh the Irish, and the Scottish. So all three nations have very strong Celtic influences. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh crap, face circle. Don't break a face circle. Bad things happen when you break a face circle. Yeah, and, and the yeah. camera kind of fools, well, fooled me anyway, where it kind of like zeroes in on Ruby as she's like examining it, but then it pans around again and the doctor's not where he used to be. That was weird. Yeah, so like the doctor just like straight up disappeared. And then, in the distance, Ruby sees this woman wearing all black with white hair. She appears, like, elderly. But we can't really see her face, and she looks like she's saying something. And every time Ruby tries to get close, she gets further. But she yes. always stays the exact same amount of distance away. Can you guess the amount of distance? <laughs> Seven Seven three three yards. Yards. About about an anchor About an anchor's throw away. So, she doesn't really know what's going on, so she decides to go to the nearest town. Yeah, so she wa she's walking, and she comes up to this woman, who looks very familiar. Yeah, this show is beginning to... By the way, we never addressed this in any previous episode, but ever since Wild Blue Yonder, which was one of the 60th anniversary shows with David Tennant, um, there's been this actress who's been showing up in Doctor Who at different points of space and time for some reason. Played by the same yeah. actress. Her name is Susan Twist. And we, I didn't notice it until after we had seen and reviewed um, Devil's Chord. Like, I didn't realize what was happening at all. I was like, oh my gosh, that is the same woman. And, I, you know, and this and it's funny because someone that we know said that Russell T. Davis mentioned that, oh yeah, we had her play all these roles because we, you know, didn't have any other actors. But that sounded like a load of BS to me. <laughs> and after this episode, there's proof that it was BS. Because um, Ruby herself says, you look familiar. Have we met before? And, you know, the woman doesn't recognize Ruby. So the show itself is acknowledging that this face keeps popping up. So it's like, no, something else is going on here. But that's for later. Um, right now, Ruby asks this woman to go talk to the woman who can't get any closer than 73 yards from Ruby. To ask her about her friend, the doctor, like what's going on. And the second this woman gets close to that woman, she runs off, like in, pa in panic. Yeah. And Weird. It was like, what the hell was that? So Ruby makes it to this tavern, I think. I yeah, tavern, it. pub, whatever. Yeah, and it looks like, it looks ancient, but apparently they use um, technology. This isn't the Stone Age, love. Something like that. And then they're, st they're, um, they're, t she's bringing up this woman to them and somebody in there offers to go in out there and talk to her. And then the same thing happens again. This dude runs off in panic and they're talking about this like thing about someone called Mad Jack about how like you've awoken him or something like that. And then there's this banging on the door. Yeah. They're all cryptic. They're all honestly acting like. Somebody who believes in the Fey realm would act. Yeah. Talking about how serious it is to mess with the Fey. 
So then, yeah, so then you hear this knocking on the door, and you're like, oh, shit, who is it? And I was like, God, is it the doctor? Yeah, I was thinking, is either the doctor or some sort of demon on the other side? But it's literally just some dude with laundry, and they're all, like, laughing at her because, you know, I think she, like, assumed that they'd all be, like, uh, I don't know what the word is. Superstitious, I guess. Sure. She stays there for a while because she can't really get back into the TARDIS. And then she eventually just gives up and goes home. But everywhere she goes, she keeps seeing that woman who can't get any closer than 73 yards. And uh, so she goes to her mom, Carla, tries to explain this. And so Carla has the idea of having her on the phone with her while she gets close. And this is the point where the episode really started to fuck with me. Yeah, because Carla got close to that woman, and even she started to run off in panic. So yeah. whatever this woman is saying or doing or something about her makes everyone that gets close run away in panic. And, you know, Ruby tried uh, running after Carla, but, you know, she wouldn't... She dr- got in a taxi and, dro- like, rode off, and then when she tried to yeah. come back home, she locked her out. And she's on the phone with Carla, and she's like, like, you're not my daughter. You're oh, Even your own mother didn't want you. And I'm like, damn! God! Damn! That hurt me so... What is going on here? Yeah, as a, as a dedicated Ruby fan, that hurt my heart. Yeah, so Ruby decides to take even stricter measures and call Unit. And she... Which was cool. This is the first time we... Well, technically not the first time we saw Unit. And... Well, no, not ever. No, but, like, the first time we saw Unit in the new series. Yeah. She... she arranges a meetup with Kate Lethbridge Stewart herself. Woo, I love Kate. Explains everything to this, explains the whole situation to her, and Kate doesn't seem that surprised because, you know, she's had a lot of run-ins with the doctor and plenty of crazy things happening. So she's like, yeah, we have precautions for this kind of stuff. Um, so she basically has all of her agents swarm around the woman, and because they all have, like, those um, earpieces that, like, can like, are like yeah. walkies, yeah, um, calm units. Yeah, they get close, and then they all hear it, and then Kate hears it too, and then all of unit just runs in panic. Ditches Ruby, poor yeah. thing. Even unit can't stop whoever this weird woman is. Yeah, so at this point, Ruby's fed up, and she's like, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? And this is what threw me off, how casually the show just kind of addresses this, but years start going by, like decades. Like, Ruby's yeah. like what, 19, early 20s when we were yeah. with her? Now she's yeah. like 40-something. Yeah, which I only caught because every so often it would pan to her in some apartment and there would be like Well, hang on, it's British. Cards. You mean flat. Oh, God. I'm just messing with Okay, you. fine. Br- okay, fine. British to five, whatever I say. I'm if just, it, if I'm just means, joking, like, bro. Yes, a flat, a, cut- a cottage, a bungalow, whatever the fuck you call it, I'm over joking. on the other side of the pan. Sheesh. Yeah, so she has cards, or as they're probably called in England, flat boards that signify that time has passed. Yeah, and I gotta say, I mean, I, I, I mostly mean this as a joke, but she hasn't aged a day. <laughs> yeah, she looks, she looks round. I'd still tap that. Of course you would. Of course I'm, of course I'm nearing 30 myself, so You're it's biased. not that weird. Um, but, uh, She's ha- having. She, you see her like over the years, like dating different people. Like those relations have probably ended because of the woman, but either that or she ended them before they got anywhere because she didn't want them to be messed with by the woman. Right. Never and, really uh, explained. And so she's like listening to the guy, well, sort of half listening to this guy talking to. You, but she looks over on a TV screen and sees a politician. Um, Whose, Who? name, whose name sounds very familiar because the doctor uh, told her at the beginning of the episode about Roger yeah. App William. App William. Oh, sorry. Like, like, he's like the most evil politician who starts like almost a kind of like a nuclear war. Oh, wait, sorry. That's in the future. And she sees that name and remembers the doctor saying that. And she's like, she's under the impression now that this is why this whole thing has happened. Because now this is her chance to save the future from this horrible politician who would eventually cause this so she sets up this whole elaborate plan to get in close with him like be one of his supporters assistants or whatever it's like a slow burn like it takes months i believe it looks like it takes months yeah yeah probably 
it's politics. It probably does take months, yeah, if not. She years. starts from the literal bottom, where it's like the group of people, like public supporters, who are behind this guy. She really gets involved, and then she's like, like next to him, like working right with the guy. And um, there's a point where they're on this like football field and, pitch, football pitch, as yeah. they call it. And um, they Ruby asks how long the field is, and I don't remember what they said it was, but she determines. It's long enough for her to take her plan into action. And they told they told the assistants, don't walk out on the grass. So Ruby starts walking out on the grass, and everyone's like, Ruby, get back here, They're like everything. And they got the, the Roger F. William, he's on a, sta- on a stand on one end of the field. Right. She takes out her phone that starts measuring the distance between the end and herself and measures it like, as she's walking backwards. And, like, the security is, like, circling her. She's like, man, get yeah. off the grass. And she measures it until it says 73 yards. And then that woman is standing next to Roger at William. And in proper fashion, he runs off in panic. And he refuses to run for whatever political position he was running for. And Prime Minister, I think. Yeah, Prime Minister. That's probably it. And then he just disappears. And mm-hmm. then she thinks, because she's fulfilled this, now the woman should go away. She's like, are you finally going to leave me alone now? But she does not. To 40 years later. That's right. 40 on top of 40. Yikes. She's back in Wales to visit the TARDIS. I'm assuming. Which has not eating. moved. It's got like stuff growing all moss over it. Moss has grown around it. There's leaves. There's flowers. Uh, it's basically become part of the scenery. Yeah. And um, she says something like, I missed you, old friend, or something like that. She's in a wheelchair. She's with someone. They don't say who this person is, but. My first thought was Lulu Bell, but she wouldn't be that young if that were the case. No. Because this woman looked like 20s. Yeah. Uh, and then it shows her in like a like an old person's home or a hospital or something. And Some. she goes to sleep, but then she sees the woman get even closer. It's like she's in her room now, like, like probably 10 feet away. <laughs> yeah. And she starts getting closer and starts turning. And then like somehow she ends up back in Wales like, but like way back then on like on the day that she and the doctor landed and she's 73 yards away from the TARDIS and she's literally like don't break the circle don't break the circle yeah. don't break the circle don't and, break the and circle th- and this time Ruby says who's that woman over there and like because that happened it changed things I and then guess. the doctor didn't step on the thing and break it and then the woman disappears, and then Ruby talks about how she's been to Wales three times before this. But before, she said two. So now she says three. Like, she remembers, but she doesn't? And I don't know how... See, this is what I mean. It, it messes with your head, because I still don't fully understand how this all worked. And Me, the episode ends right there. I don't think we're supposed to know, buddy. I, do, I don't need... I. I thought for sure it was going to start getting resolved at some point, but it never does. But I'm like, I was, I had to take a break after watching that episode because I was just like, what even is reality? The moment it stopped, we were both like, what was that? Yeah, yeah, we were all like, I can't process that, process that. Yeah, I still can't process it. Yeah, my head hurts just trying to describe it. Yeah. That was it's a not, weird... It's not that the episode itself was bad. It's just that it didn't no. have any positive moments in it, so it's hard for me to, like, talk good about it. But it wasn't it was a just... poorly made episode. If anything, it kept me more interested. It was weird. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. I've never had my brain broken by Doctor Who. Yeah, the Doctor Who took my brain out of my skull, dipped it in something acidic, and then put it back in. This is your, you this go, is your brain on Mountain Dew. This is your brain on the doctor. <laughs> um, but yeah, what would you rate this episode, Noah? Uh, eight out of ten. Yeah, I guess. eight out of ten, and that's just because I was so interested in it, and I wanted to know more, and I knew some stuff, but not enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll see you next time. <laughs>